Hello, Hello. everyone. Um, please, um, if you can hear us, please just write a message just to check that you can hear us so that we can get started. I don't know if I lied. I think we I may don't be think anyone can hear us. No, activity on feed loop. Oh, we can. So I, the Toto. Yeah. Great. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, very Let's sorry go. about that delay. Thank you all very, very much for waiting. Um, we just had a few technical difficulties on our side. And as someone rightly commented, we're doing the sound logo uh, masterclass. And obviously, we wanted to make sure that the sound was working and it was all good to go. Um, so, yeah, let's get straight into it because I'm conscious that um, we're, we're running slightly behind. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, I'm just going to get my clicker to the right slide. <sighs> my uh, clicker now doesn't want to work. Connection lost. Sorry, everyone. Okay, here we go. So yeah, welcome everyone. Sorry about all of this. Um, we are here to do the masterclass in music production of sound logos. And I'm sure you all know by now that um, next month we'll be launching Wikime uh, Wikimedia's global sound logo contest, which we're really, really looking forward to. And so as Wikimedians, we wanted to give you the first glimpse of the project and give you the essential information and the knowledge and skills that you would need to know to be able to create your own sound logo entry and to enter the contest. Emma, so meet the sorry, team. Just, um, so we are Massive Music um, and we are a global creative music agency founded just over 20 years ago. And we deliver everything that a brand could need within the world of music, voice and sound. And one of those things is sonic branding, um, which you'll hear more about during this presentation. And a huge part of sonic branding and a, and a fundamental part of it are sound logos um, as well. And so more personally, I'm Emma and I'm an account and project manager in our London office um, and my conversations with the Wikimedia Foundation started probably just over a year ago on this project. Uh, and it's been really amazing to learn so much about the movement and all the amazing work that you do. So it's been a real honour and privilege to be working on it. And I'm really excited to be sharing our work, some of our work with you today. Um, so I'll just pass over to Joe quickly so he can do a quick intro. Thanks, Emma. Um, I'm not sure if it's just me, but I'm getting quite a bit of feedback on the on when you're speaking. It's kind of doubling up. So I'm not sure if there's anything we can do about that. Um, yeah, it's the same for me, actually. On. I haven't heard anyone else speak, but I'm getting the same issue, Joe. I'm not sure who we can ask about that. Um, sh yeah, just do continue and hopefully As the studio manager can join and help fix it. It's good to know the chat can hear us clearly. Um, it's slightly distracting <laughs> to present when it's, uh, the audio is doubling up. So hopefully we can, maybe we can uh, just continue if it's okay for everyone else and we can just persevere. Joe, or if you, I don't know on your, on your settings on the left, there's different input and output. I don't know if you click Can't one of those. Can't hear Emma, I'm not sure I can hear you now. Are you still getting the feedback, Joe? I can't hear you either. Are you are you back? I was just wondering, um, yeah, if you could just, I think there's a bit of feedback coming up uh, when we all speak and then I couldn't hear Joe or Taz just then. Are you still getting feedback, Joe? Oh yeah, a little bit, it's very quiet. And someone's just said they can't hear me speaking anymore. 
Sorry, Stella's just set up. Uh, Joe, if you can push through with Echo, that'd be great because I think it's coming through great on YouTube and also in feed loop. Um, so if you could dad, push on, that'd be great. Yep. Should we, Joe? Can if you say something, can we hear you? Okay, great. Well, if everyone can hear us, um, fine, then that's probably the main thing. Um, we're all doing individual slides, so we could just go as is and not hear each other, which is a bit of a shame, um, but glad that you can all hear us. Um, let me just message Joe and Taz. Um, I can hear you now, Emma. Okay, great. Yeah, I can hear you as well. Taz. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to push on, Joe? There doesn't seem to be an echo now, and I think everything is. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Let's go awesome. ahead. Thanks for everyone's patience. Yep. Um, yep. So I'm Joe. I'm a senior creative strategist. Um, I've been working in Sonic branding um, and making sound logos for years and years now. Um, so yeah, it's good to be here. Great. Thank you. Um, thanks everyone for waiting again. Um, yeah. Let's get into the presentation and, and get started. So. Yes, so first thing we wanted to do is go through a bit of a basic audio terminology. So give you some of the musical language or terms that we often use day to day and that become useful for you whilst entering the contest. So the first thing uh, we want to look at is track. So track is essentially a long form piece of music. So it's anything from a one minute pop song or it could be something much longer. It could be a, a symphony or a, an opera or also what we're going to be looking at today are sound logos, which are much, much shorter and they're usually just between one and four seconds long. Next, we have keys. So major and minor, you may have heard of these before. They're fundamental when it comes to talking about music and music itself. So we use major and minor keys for our chords, scales, notes, and key signatures. And I think for the purposes of this masterclass and for you to understand it is and recognize the difference between major and minor is to think about if you're listening to a piece of music and it sounds happy or bright and its emotion feels like that, then it's probably in a major key. And if something sounds a bit more sad or melancholy, it's often in a minor key. Um, and we've got two examples for you now of um, a major key and then a minor key. Unfortunately, that I, cu I couldn't hear those <laughs> examples. Um, please write in the comments if you could hear those examples. Hopefully you heard them. Um, they were working just before. Oh, okay, great. Well, okay, perfect. Let's just carry on. If you can hear them, that's the main thing. Um, okay, great. Okay, great. So next up, we have got um, tempo and speed. So when we're thinking about music, all pieces of music has a tempo and so italian as i'm sure in, in italian as i'm sure some of you know that is of course the word for time and we're talking about the pace and the speed of a piece of music usually we measure this in beats per minute or bpm but often we also describe it, a piece of music as being either up tempo or down tempo um, so we've got two examples for you now one is a piece of music that's up tempo so it's faster in pace and one is down tempo so it's a bit slower in pace so we'll play those for you now And slower, hopefully the last one finished. Uh, 
Um, and so next up we have instruments and timbre. So instruments are our tools that we need to be able to create music. So it's anything from a piano, an oud, or even our voices. Our voices are fantastic instruments when it comes to creating music. Um, and also with instruments, you have the difference between real instruments and synthesized instruments. So when we're talking about real instruments, we're thinking of live instruments or acoustic instruments. And if you're going to be creating music, you'd quite often record a live musician playing that instrument and then use it within your composition or your piece of music. Um, and then also we have electronic instruments, which are synthesized instruments. Um, also, we've got um, bring from instruments, we've got timbre as well. And timbre is essentially the, the characteristics of the sound. So you could have two instruments playing exactly the same note um, on exactly the same, for the exactly same length of time, but because their timbre has a different feel or tone, um, it sounds different. So that's, for instance, why you might choose one instrument over the other because of the different feel that it gives. Um, I'm just checking, you can all hear. Yep, yeah, everyone can still hear. Great, good. Um, just checking that Joe and Taz can hear me. Sorry about this, everyone. Um, I can, yeah. Great. Um, okay, perfect. Um, I think, oh, now I can hear this. For the purposes of sort of making sure we can get through to the main bit of this, um, this presentation, I think I might push through these next few slides just to make sure that Joe can get through the essential bit of why you're all here in the music production. So um, there is going to be a glossary that's sent around after this that we've already written that has these key terms on there so you won't miss out and we can send the examples as well, um, but I'm just going to skip through them quickly. <laughs> Pass over to you, Joe. Okay, great. Thanks, Emma. I um, hope everyone can hear me clearly. Um, so now we're going to talk about sound logos um, in particular. Um, so where does it all begin? Well, sound logos have been around um, for years and years and years, um, originating back in the 1920s with Wheaties. Uh, a famous Wheaties jingle um, was used widely on the radio. Um, and really kick-started uh, the, the sort of jingle boom when people saw how effective it was. Um, this continued up into about the sort of mid-1990s, really, for saturation points. Um, and, and that's when the, the jingle kind of became a, a cheesy um, thing to use. So brands kind of started to shy away from that. But then what took over was technology. Um, you can see the Nokia classic phone there. Um, and the Nokia ringtone really became a big part of culture. Um, people realized that sound could be in your pocket um, and technology was a really good vessel for carrying sound and music. Um, and this is what we call the, the audio revolution really starting um, at this point. So now we're in an audio driven world. When you think about podcasts, when you think about sound on platforms like TikTok, or when you think about uh, in-home devices like uh, this Amazon device here, voice activation, we are living in a sound on, on world. And that's why audio branding and sound logos are especially important um, in this day and age. We have a nice stat here um, about sound um, and how people react to it. So people react to sound 17% faster than they react to visuals. Uh, this is from the University of Groningen. And yeah, it's a really insightful statistic to show you how powerful sound can be when it's used um, in a branding application. So why do we want to use a sound logo? Well, sound operates directly on our subconscious. Um, so it's a really effective way to modulate emotions. We react really emotionally to sound, you know, whether that's the, the sound of your mother's voice or, you know, the sound of uh, a song you used to listen to when you're a teenager. Um, when you hear that again, um, at any point in your life, there's a deep commo emotional connection created there. Um, so yeah, the right sound logo will add significant emotional depth to how the Wikimedia movement really is perceived. So we have some examples of sound logos here. Um, and really, there are two schools of thoughts um, in a very simplistic way. So firstly, we have what we'd call a melodic logo. Um, this is a sound logo that contains a melody, um, something that you can kind of replicate, you could sing, you could hum. So let's have a listen to an example of a melodic sound logo now. <laughs> So you can hear clearly that mel melody there, 
playing in that short form sound logo. Alternatively, we have what we call an atonal logo. And this is where the melody is removed and really we're relying on kind of timbre and sound design elements to create the sound logo. So let's have a listen to that. So there we go. That's two examples of what we could do with sound logos, but obviously this is very, very top line and there's a lot of detail you can go into. One other part of this process, which is really important, is the idea of storytelling through the sound. So why is storytelling important with this project? Well, what it means is it gives your sound logo a unique identity. So we can translate the Wikimedia movement's values into the sound by doing this. And what this does is it helps make your sound logo more, more individual and have greater meaning. You could have picked any of those logos that we just heard to represent the Wikimedia movement, but actually they have no relation to the Wikimedia movement. There's no story there. So we're asking why is that logo the one that we're gonna use? So we've got an example of a, uh, a concept, really, a story. We've, we've created a fictional uh, non-profit news organization called The Optimist, and The Optimist share only good and positive news headlines through their app and their online publication. So if you imagine this brand exists, the brief for The Optimist sound logo could be how to capture the sound of optimism and positivity in sound. So what does optimism and positivity sound like in music? Uh, maybe it's the major scale as we heard earlier, or maybe it's sort of bright sounds. So there's a few different solutions that you could have to this brief. Um, if we go on to the next slide, we can see some of these. So perhaps we could use a sound that moves upwards in pitch or in volume. So something that kind of rises up, sort of suggesting that uh, positive outlook or perhaps it could be an angelic sound that also feels digital. So the reason for that is we've got to remember that the optimists are an app, they're an online publication. So we're kind of uh, juxtaposing an angelic human sound with something that maybe feels a bit more relevant to, to where they live. And then lastly, an open free guitar strum in a major keys. So a really simple way of distilling happiness and optimism in music there. So let's have a listen to these. Uh, here's the first example, a rising sound moves upwards in pitch or volume. So we get a simple sound there. What about the angelic sound that also feels digital? Let's have a listen to that. So you can hear that angel ooh there, but also this kind of digital sound underneath it. And then lastly, an open free guitar strum in a major key. So hopefully that's all coming through clearly. Some just three simple examples of how to bring that brief for the optimist to life in music. And this is similar to what we're gonna be doing for the Wikimedia movement with this project. So now we have to look at music production and give you a little overview on that. Um, this is how we create the sounds that we're hearing. Um, it's, it's, it's really important to kind of get some knowledge on this. Some of you might know some about this already, some of you not. Um, so we're going to keep it very top line um, for this presentation. So firstly, let's have a look at the tools that we can use um, to produce music digitally on a computer. Um, there are a few different options that we're including um, in this presentation, and these are all freely available options. Um, we have Ableton Live Lite, um, Audacity, which is an open source piece of software, uh, Waveform slash Traction, Pro Tools First, and Cubase LE. So these are all available for free um, to download, um, and they have different kind of uh, styles, really. Um, it's up to you which one you choose. For this presentation, we're using Ableton Live Lite. Um, it's something that we use um, at our company a lot, and it's a really good piece of software for, for getting really creative quite quickly with sound. So moving on to our first step in the production process, we're gonna talk about recording. Uh, recording is a, a vast, complex subject, but today we're gonna distill it down to two really simple ideas. The first one is microphones, 
um, and the second one is MIDI. So microphones, I'm sure a lot of you know what a microphone is, or maybe you've used a microphone before. Um, if you use Zoom or online uh, meetings in any way, you definitely will have used a microphone. Um, but this is how we translate acoustic sound in an environment into uh, digital data, essentially. Um, we can record what we're saying or what we're hearing or an instrument, and then that will be rendered in um, our music production software of choice. Then we also have MIDI. MIDI is a uh, digital language, essentially, where we can program notation into our door, our audio workstation. Um, and this can be played on different instruments. You can select your instrument you like. Perhaps it's a piano, perhaps it's a kalimba. You can be really flexible with that information that you record. So we've got two examples of these now. The first one um, is microphones. And this is a recording of me using Ableton to simply record a finger click. So let's have a look at that. So there we are, that's me sat where I am now, clicking my fingers into a microphone and recording it in Ableton. I now have that sound. And the second example is me recording a simple white note scale in MIDI. So let's have a look at that. So there we go. That time, the sound that's used as a piano, but like I said, we could change that sound to anything we like. The main thing is we've got that notation now, um, and we can use that in, in many different really creative ways. So now we're going to look at editing. Um, there's, again, a big subject this, but we're going to cut it down to these four areas, adjusting, cutting, copying, and pasting. So, you know, we copy and paste all the time on computers, whether that's in Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, wherever. It's the same with music and audio. Um, so I think the best way to look at this is to look at an example of me doing some editing in Ableton. So if we can go to the next slide, we can have a look at that video and I can talk you through what's going on. So here we are back in Ableton. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up my finger clicks that I recorded earlier. So I'm just snapping the audio there um, just at the start of those three clicks that I played in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on the grid. So they're going to be in time. They're going to be, I'm going to drag them to a set tempo. So they play as a pattern, as a rhythmical pattern rather than a random pattern. So you can see I'm moving them, dragging them into place there. I'm going to duplicate this last one, and then I'm going to loop them, and then we'll hear it. So what was a random selection of clicks is now a very simple rhythm. Um, and that's some kind of basic audio editing in, in Ableton. Next up, we have mixing. Um, mixing is how we start getting really creative with audio and how we start changing and transforming sounds that we have recorded. Um, five areas that we're looking at today are volume, so how loud or quiet something is. We're looking at EQ, which stands for equalization. Um, so this is how you sculpt sound. This is how you remove or add frequencies to add more bass or add more, more high end. We have compression as well. Compression um, is a tool which is essentially a way of automating volume over a period of time. We have reverb, which is how we give sounds a sense of space. Um, so you can make something sound like it's in a room or it's in a cathedral. We can do that on a, on a computer. And then we have delay as well. Delay is the last piece. Um, and this is really like an echo, essentially. So a sound that repeats after you hear it. So again, we have an example of these being used. Um, back into Ableton, uh, let's have a look at what's going on. So we have our clicks again um, that we, sn we snipped up just now. So they're there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to EQ some of the low end, some of the bass out of these clicks. So it's just a higher frequency sound. So that's a higher frequency sound now. We've got rid of that bass. I'm going to compress them so the volume is level over time uh, rather than being as variable as it was. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some reverb. So I'm going to give it a sense of place. So I'm going to put it in like a hall. You can see that sort of has more of a hall and more of an acoustic environment around it. And then we've got delay. 
So you can see I'm giving a sound an echo there. So what was a simple finger click has transformed into something with more interest um, and, and more of a story to tell, essentially. So now let's look at the Wikimedia sound logo um, and, and what we're doing uh, with that. So some of the objectives that we have for this project. Emma, if you could skip on the slide, that would be great. Sorry, it's just Thanks a green slide. There we go. <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, so the objectives are to future-proof Wikimedia for audio and new platforms, like we saw earlier, um, with Amazon Alexa and things like that. We want to create a positive sentiment around the Wikimedia movement. We want to invite a global audience to engage with the Wikimedia movement and its projects. So what's the brief for this? We saw our brief for our imaginary brand earlier, um, but now we've got a, a real one for Wikimedia. So we want to create the sound logo. It should be between one and four seconds in length. Format-wise, we're looking for delivery of a WAV file, an MP3 file, or an OGG. We'd like to use original sounds or the cleared samples that have been provided for you. The logo should contain multiple layers, textures, and sounds um, to create some kind of some story um, and to make it kind of interesting. The sound should also be global and not pertain to one particular culture or style because we want to represent the Wikimedia movement. So we want to represent something that feels sort of culturally and genrally agnostic. And we don't want to pertain to one place more than another. We want to be global in, in how we represent this. So likewise, for our pretend brief, we have some creative prompts um, for the Wikimedia Sonic, Sonic uh, logo. So what I want you to do is imagine the sound of connections forming of question and answer, of trusted information, free and open knowledge, or knowledge growing. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pick one of these to start with. So think about how we could represent one of these ideas in the sound, just in the same way that we re represent positivity with a big, bright guitar strum. How might we represent some of these ideas in sound? So we've got some examples. Um, let's have a listen to what connections forming could potentially sound like. So an interesting sound there, lots of different layers. It kind of has two parts, but it also has these sort of percussive elements that to me feel like they're kind of talking or, or forming or you know becoming something that's bigger than, than just their individual parts. Next up, we have question and answer. So let's have a listen to that. So a logo there really of two parts, this you know, you can kind of get the sense of this question being asked and then the sound resolving and answering that question. Then lastly, we have trusted information. So let's see what that sounds like. So warm, grounded sound there, nothing too kind of out of the box or too surprising. Something that feels very kind of calm, very trusting. Um, and, and very pure as well. So that's just some examples of what these could be. Obviously, we want to look at some tonal prompts too. Um, so how the logo should feel when you're thinking about actually creating the sounds and, and the timbres. So we want it to be human, inspired, smart, and warm as a starter. And we want to make sure we avoid things that feel too technological or cold or synthetic or aggressive. Um, you know, we want to make sure we're sticking on that human kind of real sound. So we've got some examples um, of creating some of these logos now. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is this idea of knowledge growing. So for this, we're going to go back into Ableton, and I'm going to make a very quick logo um, around this idea of knowledge growing. So let's have a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in my, my finger snaps again. They're being reused. And I'm going to line these up on the grid uh, like we did in the editing sequence um, just to make sure they're in time with one another. So as you can see, I'm cutting out the audio, deleting it, and then duplicating. So three very, very faint finger clicks. Um, but I want them to be slower than that. So I'm going to add some more space between them. And I'm going to automate the volume so they gradually get louder over time. So there you go, you can hear that, that, that. Gradually getting louder. I'm going to add some MIDI in here, so add a melodic tone. So a little uh, Jojo Bell there instrument I'm using. And what I'm going to do is with this MIDI note that I've recorded, I'm going to line it up 
with those finger snaps. So they'll be playing at the same time as one another to kind of add another layer to that sound. So that Jojo bow is playing in time now, which is great. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a human layer. So I've got this kind of chatter sample that I've found um, of people kind of talking in a room. I'm going to turn the volume up on that slightly, and I'm going to put that underneath everything. I'm going to also automate the volume on that to rise. It's a little bit too quiet for me, though, that chatter sample. I can't really hear it, so I'm going to turn the volume up a bit more. So hopefully you can hear that kind of just underneath there. Um, and I believe that's it for, for that logo. Um, we can hear it on the next slide um, in full. Sorry, it's just picking up the connection again. Fantastic. There we are. Um, just a question. Do, do we want to try and leave some time for questions or should I continue with the, the next example, Taz? Um, what do you think? Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's go with the next example for sure. Great. Okay. So we've got one more example for you of a logo being created. Um, and this is the idea of uh, connections forming. So let's go in and see what we can do with this. So back into Ableton. And I've got a sample that's from the, uh, the library that's been provided to you. It's uh, the sound on a kitchen clock. But the first thing I'm going to do is record some MIDI. And so I recorded um, kind of like a uh, an, an African instrument there. And I've played a chord in on, uh, on Ableton there. And what I've done is I've used an arpeggiator to kind of make the notes run through rather than have solid chords being played. What I'm going to do is just line that MIDI up so it comes in at the right time. Just clean that clip up there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate a parameter on the instrument that makes it more bright over time. So last time I did volume, this time I'm going to make the sound brighter as it plays through. So I'm just automating that parameter now. You can see there. So you can see that that sound is growing and, and opening up as we move through. Now I'm taking my sample. Um, of the kitchen clock but what i want to do is i want to speed it up slightly so the the second hands tick more quickly so what i'm going to do is i'm going to warp this sample in ableton which is a slightly advanced technique All right speed it up and then i'm going to lay that underneath again that's a little bit quiet for me so i'm going to turn it up in volume so i can hear it i'm also going to add some reverb There we go. That's kind of coming together a little bit now. Um, but what I also want to do is automate the volume on that and uh, shelve out some of that low end to remove some of the bass from the sound. Okay. And I'm also going to add a compressor to, to level out the volume of the clips. Okay, the logo is starting to come together now, but I want to make some more movement on our on our African sound there. So I'm going to add a filter that sweeps over the frequencies um, as we play through the sound to give it some more movement. So you can hear it just opening up a little bit there, and we've created more of a uh, an in-depth logo that has more layers and that is a little bit more complex. So let's have a listen to that logo in full. So clearly they were both made very quickly. Um, so you can spend so much more time on them than I have there. Um, but it does give you a good idea of, you know, how you make these, how you start to build um, music using using different techniques um, and, and different ways of recording as well. So I believe that means we've come to the end of the presentation and we've got some time for questions, um, if there are any. Yeah, please feel free to just write them in the comments. And thank you again all for, for sticking around. Sorry about those technical difficulties we had at the beginning. But yeah, we've got a few more minutes just to answer any questions you've got. And I also think Taz was um, updating some useful info about where you can find more about the contest on, on the chat. So hopefully you've seen all of that.
Yeah, I've put some info in the chat. I just want to say thanks very much to Emma and Joe for a great presentation. This presentation will be available on Commons uh, soon after Wikimania, so everyone, everyone can review uh, and pause at their leisure and have a go at making some great cell goes. Just some information for everyone uh, in case they didn't see the chat or on YouTube. Uh, they weren't able to either. Just to let everyone know, uh, the Sound Logo contest will launch on September the 13th. Um, and in the meantime, you should definitely familiarize yourself with the contest page. Uh, that link is in the chat. Um, also, uh, we have five community liaisons that are working with the Sound Logo project team. Um, you can get hold of them and the Sound Logo project team at soundlogo, one word, uh, at wikimedia.org. Um, so we, uh, myself um, and my three colleagues on the project team, uh, Matoto, uh, Murdad and Lena, will be um, checking out that email address. Um, uh, and we'll be forwarding on to the liaisons as well. There's also a great collaboration space called the Sound Lab, uh, where you'll be able to uh, kind of get creative, share thoughts, um, and work with other Wikimedians as well. If you have a concept and you're not really sure how to create it or develop it, uh, we'll be offering workshops um, soon after Wikimania as well, a bit closer to the contest. So feel free to show your thoughts via that email. Um, that I gave you, sound logo at wikimedia.com. And lastly, we're looking for uh, volunteers to join our screening team. So the screening team will be uh, reviewing sound logo submissions as they come in. So they'll be mostly reviewing them for technical uh, factors like length and file type, file size, length, uh, vandalism, things like that. Um, if you're interested, we'd love to hear from you. Please uh, get hold of us at the email soundlogo at wikimedia.org to join the screening team as well. Um, just checking if we've got any questions. I'll hand back to Emma and Joe just to see if there's any questions. If not, yeah, perfect. We do have a question from Ludovic who said, um, already asked in Q&A, but in case this doesn't get across, how much uniqueness and originality do we need for a sound logo uh, in sort of legal and practical terms? So as, as the part of the contest, you can create sound logos either using completely original sounds or you've also got the copyright free samples that are available to you in the sound bank. So we obviously understand that within music, you're not going to know every single piece of music in the entire world, but you need to either make sure that any sample you're using is completely copyright free um, or to very much the best of your knowledge, it isn't uh, the same or very similar to something that you already know that ex exists. Um, so yeah, we encourage quite unique and original concepts, uh, not concepts, original ideas for those sound logos. Hopefully that helps answer your question, but there'll be more about it on the sort of FAQ sections of the contest platform as well. Um, where can I get the tools to make the sound logos? So the list of um, free production platforms that we shared today um, will be, I think if, if you Google them or search them online, you'll be able to find them very easily and they are all free to use, but you are welcome to use any other music platform, production platform that you know of. If you prefer to do that, then, then go for it. Um, and that list will be available on, on the contest platform as well. Um, are there any other questions? don't think I can see any other questions. Probably got one more minute if anyone has any, any anything else. I think that's probably it then and we are just about out of time. So yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks so much for, for sticking around um, to the end of this um, masterclass. Hope you found it useful. And yeah, we're really looking forward to this contest and looking forward to hearing your submissions and hopefully meeting you again um, throughout the process and whether it's in the workshops or, or otherwise. But yeah, thank you very much. And thanks, Taz and the San Logo team. And, and yes, everyone. And thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Joe. Take care, everyone. See you, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye.